Hello, good afternoon. It's official. Time is up for the Tinsley Cooling Towers. As Look North exclusively reported two weeks ago, Sunday, August the 24th, will be demolition day. E.ON, the power company which owns the towers, confirmed the date today and says everything is now set to bring them down. Tom Ingle reports. It's a dismal outlook for this 250-foot-tall Yorkshire landmark. The clock is now ticking towards demolition. Two weeks ago, we brought you these pictures of work starting at the base of the Tinsley Towers. Contractors have been working to drill holes for the explosive charges. We said the date was August the 24th. This morning, the owners, E.ON, admitted that is D-Day. The motorway will be closed for a number of hours from about midnight uh, on the Saturday evening, Sunday morning, and then through basically until the Highways Agency declares it safe. We've got a number of tests and a number of measures in place to make sure that it hasn't moved, nothing has damaged it, so the road is safe to be opened. When it's deemed safe, we'll open the M1 again. Well, I think, you know, they could have been made into a hotel or something rather, you know, nice. I think there's a lot of people that are opposing it, but I think it's history now and we need to move on. Uh, it's better. It's give, it's, we give a lot of uh, space and uh, what they build there again, we, uh, we beautify the area. I think it's, uh, it's a good icon for the, for the city and um, we should try to keep them. The sun will set on the towers for the last time on August the 23rd. Demolition is being penciled in for the early hours of the 24th, so by the morning, if all goes to plan, they'll be gone. Negotiations are continuing with the nearby Meadowhall Shopping Centre to use the car parks as viewing grandstands. Gosh, that is the end of an era, isn't it? What do you think about the decision to pull down the towers? Get in touch with us here on Look North. You can text us. The number you need is on your screen right now, 07786 202 666, or simply send us an email. Our address is look.bbc.co.uk. Now the rest of this lunchtime's news. The tearful widow of a man shot dead at a Bradford nightclub has made an emotional appeal today for witnesses to come forward. Brenda Gordon from the Swain House area of the city was speaking nine days after her 30-year-old husband Damien was shot dead at the entrance of the Icon Club in Westgate. Our crime correspondent John Cundy is uh, in the city this afternoon. Police believe, John, that the answers lie in the city. Very much so, Christy, yes. They believe that of something like 200 people who were in the Icon a week last Saturday night into the early hours of Sunday morning when the murder happened, uh, that the vast majority of them were from Manchester, perhaps only 12 from Bradford, so upwards of 200 people. And that's why West Yorkshire detectives came to Manchester today to make their latest appeal to get the Manchester media uh, disseminating information as well as the West Yorkshire media. They also brought with them to the Greater Manchester Police Training School here Damien Gordon's widow, Brenda, who made this emotional appeal. I want everybody to know that my life has been frozen after finding my husband dead. <laughs> my kids are lost without their dad. <laughs> We're frozen in a timelessness that until someone comes forward and names the person who killed Damien. Brenda Gordon there clearly struggling to get her message across to the media but appealing desperately for those witnesses, particularly from the Manchester area, to come forward. John, have police made any progress in the investigation? Yes, they've certainly made some. They've had four specific and very hard informational calls from anonymous callers in the Manchester area, Krista. But you can appreciate, of course, that if there were the best part of 200 people in the nightclub from Manchester, there are so many, many more people they want to come forward to speak to them. But they have had very hard information and, in some cases, uh, names named as to who might be responsible for the killing and why. Now, what history could there be in the lead-up to this killing? Well, it would seem that Damien Gordon may well have known his killers, that he may have been in contact with people from Manchester for, for quite some time. It's apparently not unusual for a large gathering of people from Manchester to come over to West Yorkshire for a night out. So there may have been some tension that's built up in those uh, weeks before the murder, but there specifically was no fight in the club before these shots were fired. It was a very sudden thing at 3.30 in the morning when three shots were fired into the chest of Damien Gordon. But once again, police have come to Manchester, this is where they think the answers lie. John, thank you very much. 
A 47-year-old woman from South Yorkshire has appeared in court this morning charged with murder. Margaret Desmond, who was 50, was found dead at her home in Hoyland near Barnsley on Sunday. Post-mortem tests have found that she'd been strangled. Beverly McManus, who lived at the same address, was remanded in custody after appearing before magistrates. A woman who claims her 83-year-old mother was killed by the stress of receiving junk mail hopes her new website will raise awareness of scams. Jessica Luke from Chesterfield was defrauded by £50,000 in the post. Now, her daughter Marilyn Baldwin has launched thinkjessica.com to stop more people falling victim to scams. Details of the site will be circulated across the country. Well, Yorkshire is still without emergency air cover today, while checks are carried out on the region's air ambulances. As we revealed on Look North yesterday, both the helicopters were grounded after a fault was discovered in identical aircraft in London. Yorkshire Air Ambulance say the aircraft are now going undergoing maintenance checks in Gloucester. They are expected to be back up and running tomorrow. An inquest into the death of a soldier found hanged at Catterick in North Yorkshire has been told this morning he was suffering from an adjustment disorder. Lance Corporal Derek McGregor, who was just 21 and from Blackpool, died five years ago. His father claims he was bullied. Peter Lugg sent us this report from the inquest in Harrogate. Lance Corporal Derek McGregor was found hanged in his room at Gaza Barracks in Catterick on the 7th of July 2003. This resumed inquest had previously heard how the 21-year-old army medic had left a note saying the army had accused him of lying over suffering from a psychiatric disorder for which he'd been receiving treatment. Giving evidence this morning, army regimental nurse Major Wink said he believed that Derek had possibly been suffering from an adjustment disorder brought on by the breakup of a relationship with a girlfriend and an army investigation into images found on his computer. Derek had admitted binge drinking and at one time had been found wandering around the barracks at night saying he was looking for a place to hang himself. The army's reaction was to manage the condition by better integrating the young soldier into his unit and asking him to share a room. The hearing continues and the coroner's verdict is expected later this afternoon. Peter Lug, BBC Look North, Harrogate. Thank you, Peter. Now, today is the so-called Glorious 12th. That's the start of the grouse shooting season. And shooters from as far away as America are heading for the Yorkshire Moors. Shelley Henry reports. For grouse shooters, this is not just a sport, but a way of life that also controls grouse numbers. And with the current credit crunch, they're keen to promote its economic benefits. All the spin-off that comes from this activity, whether it's hotels benefiting, or the, the um, garages or the shops. This is all important to these areas, which otherwise um, could be considered unfavoured. But campaigners claim this could mean dwindling grouse numbers and it's a price not worth paying. The grouse season continues for the next four months. Yes, and so does the rain. We'll be checking uh, out the latest forecast uh, with Paul in a moment. It's the first day of the Roses cricket match between Yorkshire and Lancashire in the county championship. And you may be surprised to hear that at Old Trafford, the start has been delayed. Wonder why. Now, on to the Olympics, and the women's hockey team kept their Olympic dreams alive. Meanwhile, Sheffield sailor Paul Goodison is lying in sixth after the first two rounds of the laser competition. With the latest, here's Tanya. That is Paul Goodison coming in now.